Hey guys, it's Clovis, and today I'm going to show you guys all of the hidden card locations in the Duelist of the Roses Redux mod. For those of you who know all about the hidden card feature, I'm just putting all the locations and the corresponding cards on the screen at the start of this video right now. However, afterwards I'm going to explain how hidden card works in a bit more detail, and also run through some of the changes for the hidden card find in the Redux mod. I'll also be talking about the cards you collect in detail and what you can use them for in addition to some other stuff. While we're here at the start, I do want to clarify that all monsters in Redox mod gain the hidden card bonus. All monsters will gain it at the major rank, which is 1 star and 1 stripe. This means that it doesn't matter what monster type your deck leader is, you will get hidden cards so long as you hit the major rank. Also, if you hit Brigadier General, or BG, on your deck leader, you will gain a bonus tile surrounding your deck leader to help you collect the hidden cards a lot easier. I purposely arranged the hidden cards and how they're represented in the game so that the only possible way to gain these hidden cards is to acquire them via the hidden card find method. And because that would mean you could only gain the card once, I made it so that all of these cards are available in the graveyard slots so that you can duplicate them in the custom duel against Deck Master K. I will show this duplication method later on in the video. Also, if you were looking for any particularly rare cards that aren't in this video, you might want to check out the old three in a row video that I did for the Duels of the Roses Redux mod. That even contains a list of all the bonus cards you get through the graveyard slots in terms of rare three in a rows. Otherwise, if you can't find the card you're looking for through these methods, or the graveyard slots from an enemy in the game, then you want to use Reincarnation for those cards. And to finish up this intro, don't forget to check the description of the video for any more relevant links, including the music that I'm using in the video. And yeah, enjoy the ride. Thanks everyone again for playing the Redux mod, and let's play through the game and get all the hidden cards. Now, to show you how to get the hidden card ability and duplicate these cards, I'm going to start a new game and run through everything play by play so you can see how it's all done. You can literally pick any deck to start with, it does not matter. Now that we've picked a deck, make sure you save the game once you hit the overworld, then exit to the main menu, then go to the custom duel. If you haven't done this already, eject the second memory card in the second slot in the emulator. You will need to do this to face Deck Master K, which is crucial to duplicating your cards in the custom duel. What we're gonna do now is get Major really quick. In fact, I'm actually just gonna level to Brigadier General so I have the extended support range as well. If you do this, it will just make it far easier to get the hidden cards. Some hidden cards are under Labyrinth, meaning you'll need to destroy the Labyrinth to move your deck leader onto that tile, but if you have the Brigadier General deck leader or a higher rank than that, you'll be able to just collect the card simply by moving to a tile next to that hidden card, making them much easier to collect. So the first thing we're going to do is get multiple copies of our deck leader. We want the max of three copies just so that we can level it up really fast. The easiest way to do this is to go straight to default map 21, enter the duel, and skip a turn. You will automatically win the duel. And your deck leader will show up in the graveyard slots. Simply collect three copies of your deck leader, then go to the deck edit screen and put them all in your deck. Now to level it up further, use default map 22. 
raise your SP regeneration to 12 just to make this faster and more convenient, then enter a duel against your now edited deck on default map 22. Now just skip through your hand dumping everything else and flip 3 copies of your deck leader face up and skip turns. Remember in the emulator, you can press F4 to disable your frame limiter, which will make your game run as fast as your computer is comfortable handling it. This will make the leveling up process much faster. Using this method, getting the major rank should only take a couple duels. However, to get BG, you will need to do a couple more. I'm just going to skip this part for the sake of the video. Really, all you need to do is have three face-up copies of your deck leader and press start and keep doing these duels until you get the rank you desire. You can even level up to max here if you really, really want to be overpowered. So, don't forget to save your game, then you can exit to the main menu, then continue your normal game. Now we can just start collecting the hidden cards as we progress through the game. Now at this point, I'm just going to waltz into each duel and run straight towards the hidden card, tell you what it is, and explain what they do. All of the hidden cards in this game are extremely powerful cards and useful in almost any deck. Some of them can be pretty high deck cost, but you can always replace cards you're not using that have a hefty deck cost value with some of these cards. So to start off, we have Hourglass of Courage on Taya's map. The little stained glass window in the left side of the map will give you Hourglass of Courage. Reminder that as soon as you discover a card, you can actually lose the duel and you will still have the card. You don't actually have to win the duel to claim it. So if you run here, you can actually surrender if you want, then just go duplicate the card and go back into the duel. Hourglass of Courage itself is an extremely powerful buff card. It is a 4 star fairy with 1100 attack and 1200 defense points with a very powerful effect. When this card is destroyed and you have more than 1000 life points, you will lose 1000 life points then all of your monsters on the field receive an attack and defense boost of 1000. Because this effect works with all monsters, it is a great stable for any deck. You can play it defensively and bait the enemy into attacking and destroying it, and it will grant all of your monsters the same boost that two of your average power-up cards would for each monster. Because this effect stacks, you may also want to use the max of three copies in your deck so that you can potentially boost your field up to 3000 attack and defense. It's a whole blue-eyes white dragon! So let's do that. Make sure you save before going into the main menu. Now, if you haven't already, stick it into your deck, then go back to default map 22 and play the card face up. In Redux mod, a monster needs to be face up for 25 turns and not lose experience to go from non-commissioned officer to second lieutenant. If you want to be safe, skip 30 turns with a monster face up and it will be guaranteed to rank up from nothing to the first rank. Now that we have a rank on this monster card, set it as your deck leader. Now you go to the default map 21 and skip the first turn and the card will show up in the graveyard slots so that you can just freely duplicate it. You can use this method for every single monster card that shows up in the graveyard slots, not just the hidden card find. Just a reminder that this method does not work for cards that are not monsters, so those will be a bit harder to duplicate, but I will talk about options for those when I get to them. Speaking of non-monsters, the next duel's hidden card is the almighty and powerful Sword of Dragon Soul at the top right corner of Tristan's map. Simply take a right at the castle's front bridge and navigate the moat until you reach the end of the map.
Sword of Dragon Soul can be equipped to any warrior card and provides the warrior with an effect that makes it automatically destroy any dragon type creature it battles with. This card can be used to completely trivialize some duels, so do keep it handy. If you want to duplicate it, the best way to duplicate it is to have a deck full of warriors with a copy of this in the deck and go to the custom duel. If Deck Master K equips a monster, the equip gets sent to the graveyard. So, check the graveyard slots after he equips a monster, and if Sword of Dragon Soul is in the graveyard, end the duel as soon as possible and try to collect it where it's in the slots. If you don't have any warriors in your deck, you can collect some from Tristan to put a bunch in your deck and make it more likely for him to equip the card. To make it more efficient, if you successfully get a second copy, put that in your deck before grinding for a third one so that Deck Master K is more likely to draw it and use it. And once you have three copies, stick all three in your deck and continue to duplicate it. Bonus copies may seem redundant, but you may want to gain spare copies of this card as you can reincarnate any bonus copies of it to get some very powerful cards. Sword of Dragon Soul has a deck cost of 70 in Redux mod, so if you reincarnate it, you can obtain some of the best possible cards you can reincarnate in the entire game. Reminder, do not reincarnate this card if you only have one copy, as you will not be able to get it back without starting a new game. So now we're at Mai, and this is a more difficult one to get. You need to manage to get near the top right corner of the map. If you play through the middle, Mai will move to this part, so you may need to manipulate her to move away from this so that you can reach it. If she does move here though, you can continue to pressure her to move around the corner away from the tile. Approach it until you get Fiend Reflection number 2. Fiend Reflection number 2 is a 4 star light winged beast with 1100 attack and 1400 defense. It has a flip effect that allows you to play another card from your hand if you've already played one. You can use a lot of combos with this, but one of my favorites is simply to play this out of the hand to attack directly, and its effect will allow you to play another card on top of it to hit a second attack in the same turn. Next up on Mako's Field, we have one of the easiest hidden cards to find. Simply move your deck leader to the right until you hit the bottom right corner of the map, and you will unlock Heavy Storm. Heavy Storm is one of the most powerful spell cards in the game, and will fit into any deck. In my opinion, the best way to use Heavy Storm is simply to play it before going for a finishing attack to destroy any traps the enemy might have so that you can get a clean attack. Unless the enemy has something like Magic Jammer to block the activation of this card, you can freely attack your opponent after activating this card, making it a perfect setup to end a duel. To duplicate spell cards, the only real way to do it is to put it in your deck and duel Deck Master K until they either activate it or they play it face down and then you run over it and send it to the graveyard. And now for Joey's hidden card. It's a sneaky one as it's hidden on a labyrinth tile. If you're Brigadier General or higher you can just simply move your deck leader forward one tile, but if you don't have BG you can reincarnate a card such as Cannon Soldier or Dharma Cannon to destroy the labyrinth or use any other spell you have that either destroys or manipulates Labyrinth on the map. Grave Robber is a 60 deck cost spell card that allows you to select and revive one non-monster card from either graveyard. Next up is Shardy, and like Mai, it's a tough one to get as you'll just have to brute force your way into it. Head all the way to the tile that Shardy's deck leader starts on, and you will unlock Gate Deeg. Gate Deeg is a 3 star dark beast monster with 700 attack and 800 defense with a flip effect that raises your summoning power to the max of 12. This means if you have any really powerful high summoning power cards, you can simply activate Gate Deeg and then play those monsters out of the hand the following turn. Synergizing with this effect is actually the next hidden card, Darkness Approaches. You can find it on the Labyrinth tile at the top right of Jasper Dice Tudor's map. Darkness Approaches is 50 deck cost in Redux mod, and it's a spell card with a notorious effect that flips all monsters on the field face down. If you haven't used this card before, it synergizes particularly well with flip effect monsters, 
as you can use a flip effect monster, then flip it back down with this card to activate the flip effect monster a second time. Bakura is up next, and if you manage to navigate the center of the mountain he watches over, you will find Time Seal. Time Seal is yet another powerful spell card, who would have guessed, coming in at 50 deck cost. Time Seal has the simple effect of spellbinding the highest attack card on the field. As long as you don't have an extremely high attack monster, it may be a good idea to use this. Now for another equip. On the corner of Yugi's castle on the right side of the map, you will find Anti-Magic Fragrance, which is very similar to Sword of Dragon's Soul. Anti-Magic Fragrance is a 70 deck cost power-up card that can be equipped onto plants to automatically destroy spellcasters, making it particularly useful on this duel. If you're having trouble with Yugi's powerful spellcasters, simply equip this card to a plant and it will destroy all of his most powerful cards. If you don't have a plant, you can reincarnate monsters at varying deck costs to acquire one. Now for the boss of the White Rose campaign, we have the core positioning spell card in the game, Dimension Hole. If you can manage to budge through the Stonehenge against the boss and perhaps bully him, you'll collect the 50 deck cost spell card, Dimension Hole, which you can activate to move your deck leader to the tile you activate it on. Dimension Hole has varying uses. You can set it opposite to where you're playing to escape a rough position, but the prime use for it is rushing your opponent. So now let's go to the Red Rose side where we can collect some more hidden cards. One I think a lot of people are happy to see you can collect is Arsenal Bug. On Weevil's map, scurry your way through the forest to the Wasteland tile on the upper right side of the map to unlock it. Arsenal Bug is an extremely powerful Earth Insect card that basically activates forest on itself whenever it attacks. On top of that, it has a flip effect that increases its attack and defense by 1500 points if your deck leader is an insect monster. If you want to make the game extremely easy, level this up, duplicate it, and just go full ham on your opponents. Arsenal Bug has 2000 attack and defense, which, assuming both of its effects activate, will increase its attack and defense to 4,000. The summoning level of this card has been nerfed to 7 stars, meaning that you will not be able to play it on your first turn, in addition to needing 2 or 3 turns between playing a second one. However, this card is still one of the highest attack insect cards, with two of the most powerful effects in the entire game combined into one card. It's just ridiculous. Rex's hidden card is not nearly as powerful, but has some notoriety in the real card game. Sinister Serpent is a 1 star water reptile with 300 attack and 250 defense, with an effect that drops your opponent's summoning power to zero when it is destroyed. To collect it, you'll have to navigate your way to the puddle at the bottom left of the cave. If you collect a dimension hole, this is far easier. Otherwise, maybe use some labyrinth destroying cards. Otherwise, you're gonna have to take the long way around to collect this. Sinister Serpent is best played defensively. If the enemy destroys it, they won't be able to follow up that turn with any monsters that have a summoning power above 3. In a dream world, if the enemy happens to only have a hand with monsters more than 3 summoning power, then they won't play anything on the next turn if they kill this. Now for Necromancer. Well, Bones. With a very standard position for the hidden card, it is actually the exact same spot as his old map. Simply reach the top left of the map, bully his deck leader away from the spot if you have to, and you will collect Temple of Skulls. Temple of Skulls is a 4 star dark zombie monster with 900 attack and 1300 defense. Of course, it has a powerful effect to make up for these subpar stats. While this card is in face up defense position, it nullifies the activation of all spell cards. This can completely shut down any AI that rely on powerful spell cards, although be mindful that it does disable yours as well while it's in face up defense position. If you do use this, 
it's best to play it in a deck that doesn't use spell cards at all so you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, if you're using it, make sure you switch it back to attack position before you activate any spells. Panic's Field contains another Destiny Draw monster card just before the pillar on the right side of the map, and to reach it, you'll need to destroy your ankle shackles or use magic and teleport out of them to reach this spot on the forest tile. And then you will unlock Woodland Sprite. Woodland Sprite is a powerful earth plant card with an attack and defense value of 2100. This card is also nerfed to 7 stars, but does retain its powerful effect that grants it a bonus whopping 2500 attack and defense during battles against fiend monsters. If you're somehow struggling against panic at this point, grab it, duplicate it, then play a few of these and thank me later. And then to complete the trio of the nerfed overpowered monsters, we have Kinetic Soldier on Keith's map. You can collect this on the Wasteland tile just underneath the Labyrinth tile at the top left corner of the map. Kinetic Soldier is a 7 star Earth Machine with 2350 attack and 1800 defense with an effect that grants a 2000 attack and defense bonus against warrior monsters. Now for a bit of a surprise, we have the one terrain card in the game that you can actually duplicate in the graveyard slots, which is Burning Land. You can find it on the meadow tile behind the soul labyrinth tile at the top left of Labyrinth Ruler's map. Burning Land is a 30 deck cost field spell card that turns the surrounding tiles from anything other than labyrinth into normal terrain. It is a fantastic neutralizer, and if you don't already have a terrain card, consider picking this up as it's extremely effective to neutralize the opponent's field advantage. You'll find this card particularly useful against the final boss, so if you're having trouble with him, duplicate this so that you can wipe the crushed terrain off his field, and that can help you out a lot with that duel. Reverse Trap is a nice cartoony card that can be found on Pegasus map if you make your way through the merry-go-round in the center of his map and get your deck leader to the tile in front of his deck leader opposite side of the labyrinth. Reverse Trap is a 25 deck cost trap card that reverses the attack and defense bonuses of any power-up cards. It doesn't reverse any buff spell cards or anything like that, so just be mindful that it's only power-up cards. If you don't have a lot of power-up cards yourself, Reverse Trap can be very effective as all opponents in the game use power-ups. So if the enemy triggers this on a turn, they can chain a bunch of power-ups to a monster, it will significantly reduce their attack power, and then further disable them from activating power-up cards without a penalty until they destroy this card. And as we all well know, the AI are absolutely terrible about consciously doing anything including destroying a trap card that's positioned outside the reach of their monsters. Ishtar no longer has Crush on her field for gameplay purposes, but you can still find a little bit of it if you get your deck leader behind the pillar on the left side of the map. If you do so, you will unlock Crush card, an equip that you can stick on any monster with an attack of 1000 or less, which gives them an effect that leaves crushed tiles on the field after it's destroyed by battle, just like Immortals. This can turn any weak monster card into an extremely powerful trap card that will destroy the opposing monster that kills it if its attack is 1500 or higher, then that crush will continue to sit there for you to play around, providing a defensive barrier for high attack monsters that can't move over it. Crush card, unlike some other cards on this list, has actually been buffed in Redux mod by having its deck cost halved down to 40. So if you never use this card because of the high deck cost, maybe give it a try now. And now for the easiest hidden card in the game. It's not even really hidden. Just literally move your deck leader forward to collect Insect Imitation. Insect Imitation is a 5 deck cost equip card that you can combine to egg monsters to transform them into a random card corresponding to the effect. You will know if a monster can be equipped with Insect Imitation if you look at a card's effect and see that it states you can equip it. Examples include monsters with egg in their name, 
but it also works on Rear Ran and Manga Rear Ran. Another deck leader camped hidden card is Seto Kaiba's hidden card. If you manage to get to the spot where he usually likes to sit at the top left of the map, you will unlock Lord of D. Lord of D is a 4 star dark spellcaster which grants spell, trap and power up immunity to dragons while it is face up on the field in defense mode. If you're playing a dragon deck and finding they're destroyed too easily by spells and traps, consider collecting this card and using Lord of D. And now for the final hidden card on the final boss. Far easier said than done, try to navigate your deck leader to the spot that Carrot Idol likes to sit on. This is the tile in front of where he spawns. If you manage to do this, you will unlock Goblin Fan. Goblin Fan is a permanent full range trap with 25 deck cost that reverses all sources of burn damage from the opposing player, preventing them from dealing damage to you via a burn card, and then doing the same damage back to your opponent. This is arguably one of the best cards, if not the best card against this boss, if you're struggling with him. If you collect it, you put it in your deck, and you play it on the first turn, then the enemy can shred its own life points just by playing Ryoku. If it plays two Ryokus in the same hand, and triggers Goblin Fan, well it's not likely, it is possible, and it will literally kill itself if it completes a move with two Ryokus in their hand when you have this card face down. It will literally just lose from that move. So, if you're stuck and you can't beat the boss, collect Goblin's Fan, that'll give you a huge advantage. It means that the enemy won't even be able to activate Ryoku two times without dying, and then you win the game. Congratulations. And that's it. So, thanks for watching the video. I hope you're all enjoying the Redux mod. I know it's been out for four months at this point, so maybe everyone's already played it and got bored of it. I'm not entirely sure when the next video I upload will be, and I'm not sure what it will be. But if you like the video, please consider liking it. Please consider leaving a comment if you want to help me beat the YouTube algorithm final boss. And feel free to subscribe. If you're interested in seeing my next videos as I'm trying to hit 7,000 subscribers. You can also view some of the playlists you see on the screen for more content on the game and whatever else happens to appear. I don't even know yet, but I'll figure it out as I upload the video. Thanks again, everyone for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. See ya.